Given that we all work from home these days, I really wanted to get hold of a handheld oscilloscope that had some decent specs. What I'm looking for is something that can be used to compare signals, so to see if a crystal oscillates at 25 megahertz or to verify SPI or I2C signal quality. Uh, I'd also be using it to troubleshoot power supplies and other things out in the field, so portability was important to me. And I was hoping for something about around $100. I'm a big fan of instruments from Fluke, but I, I just can't afford to pay $2,500 for a Fluke 124B. If I was using this on a daily basis as part of my job, I might be willing to pay that much, but for home use, this is much, much, much too expensive. Just the official bag for the oscilloscope uh, will bust my budget, so this, this is not something to look at. I did have a, have a look at the Unity uh, UTD1050DL, but $370 is still a little more than I'd want to pay for something that I'll only use every now and then and just to test very basic things. I looked at a lot of USB scopes and quite a bit on the Digilent Analog Discovery too. It could do up to 30 megahertz, it had a waveform generator, it could work as a logic analyzer and much more, but the software looked quite limiting actually, uh, especially for a $270 tool. I mean like at that price you can easily get a nice entry-level bench scope from a good vendor which is 100 megahertz so, so, so why would you pay that much for something like this. They did offer educational pricing so I sent them an email with my official university email and I explained that I lecture embedded systems but apparently that wasn't good enough for them to offer educational pricing. My main problem with USB scopes is that they don't give you the best portability since you also need a PC. So I looked around and almost everything I could find on my usual sources like DigiKey and Mouser was either too expensive or just too slow. I spent way too many hours browsing the web for possible solutions, but in the end I always ended up on websites like AliExpress or Banggood. For many years I've looked at these small DSO oscilloscopes, they're portable, they have nice screens, they look pretty cool. Uh, the problem with them is that they're all very slow. MSPS is short for megasamples per second, and it's, it's the main measure of how often an oscilloscope will test the voltage of a signal. So how many million of samples per second can these cheap uh, DSO oscilloscopes do? Well, they typically won't do more than one MSPS. And the general rule is that you want to have a sample rate of five times the signal that you want to look at. And this means uh, that a curve would have at least five points to describe it if you have five times the, what you're sampling. So these scopes could maybe be used to look at slow 100 kilohertz I2C signals, but they certainly couldn't see faster things such as full speed I2C, SPI or crystal. This so-called 50 megahertz scope from Hantec, for instance, can only do 150 MSPS. Uh, so to say that it's 50 megahertz is, is not correct actually. It, it could only reliably capture 30 megahertz. Eventually I found that there is a whole class of portable oscilloscopes that have the form factor of a large multimeter. This is what I wanted, something that packs down easily when I don't use it. I spent almost two entire days watching YouTube reviews and reading written reviews of possible scopes. Yes, if you do check the other reviews on YouTube, you'll find that this super low priced ATorch 5012H is just too good to be true. It's, it's not anywhere near what it's claiming. It's, it's a fun scope, but it's not delivering what it promises. So in the end, I had nailed it down to just a couple of scopes I looked at. I looked at the Huntec 2C42 and the Huntec 2C72. Uh, the reviews on these were a little mixed and it would be nice to have a waveform generator like the kind of upper class model uh, they had like the 2D42 and the 2D72 versions. And then there was this other scope called uh, Jinhan JDS 6052S and it was on sale for $103. It had two channels, 200 MSPS sampling, 3K sample depth, so it, it can store 3000 samples. And it even had a built-in waveform generator and it had higher specs and a better price. <laughs> it even claimed that I didn't have to take the test, whatever that should mean. There was one problem though. 
the fact that there were no reviews was a bit worrisome, but the price was actually just below my targets. I pondered it a week, I looked at even more alternatives, and I came to the conclusion that at, at this price I could just take the chance and maybe I could even do a review myself. The package took just a little more than a month from China, despite using the official AliExpress shipping, which is normally faster, but hey, it's uh, COVID time these days, so many postal services struggle to keep up. Uh, the package arrived slightly beaten up in a cardboard box, but it looked mostly unharmed. Uh, the box had these foam inserts that seemed to have protected it quite well, despite rough travels for 34 days. It came with a battery charger that had a very doubtful appearance. It, it actually barely hangs together and I wouldn't dare to put it into any 230 volt socket. It also would be very hard since the promise on it doesn't extend far enough for it to actually touch any European socket, so it's, it's basically useless. I did a brief teardown of it before throwing it away uh, and I have a better charger for such batteries, so might be a thing uh, to think about if you're getting one of these yourself. The scope itself is kind of large, I have pretty big hands and it has a good form factor for me, but if you have smaller hands you'll probably find it too big to hold comfortably. I think it's probably the same with most of these though. Uh, if you have a big screen you usually need to have a big device as well. And under the foam insert there's the remaining parts of the kit. Uh, there's a test cable with crocodile clips. There's a USB cable, there's an extra screen protector. And there's a mini CD that presumably holds the manual. And there's a set of two probes with uh, one and ten times attenuation. <laughs> the standard marketing pen. So let's have a look at that manual. Mm, okay, it has nice screenshots, it tells in English what each menu item is and what the function buttons do on each screen. So this is useful but it's not very extensive. It lists the specs at the end of the manual, it's, it's, it's not much more to see and I didn't actually expect much more either. So the scope didn't come with an 18 650 battery, but I happen to have uh, a few of those lying around. It, it looks like it can fit both cells that have a protection chip and those that don't have one. It it's, has some flex to it. Uh, I added uh, the crocodile clip probe and I, I turned it on. It looked good. Didn't have a long start time either. Played around with it a bit and uh, it looked decent. The, the beep when you're clicking is really easy to turn on and off. It, it took me just 10 seconds to get tired of that. The interface certainly isn't intuitive, but after playing with it for a few hours I feel that I have a fairly good hang of it. The, the auto function does save a lot of clicks, so I'll likely use that a lot. The device itself looks very cheap, as in like there's no rubber padding, it's just this hard plastic casing. It's quite lightweight and uh, the membrane buttons also feel kind of cheap, but hey. This is a cheap oscilloscope, so I did expect that. There are also two oscilloscope connectors at the top, two probe connectors, and there's also one for the waveform generator. There's a USB connector on the side, but that's not for charging. It's only for doing firmware updates and uh, getting out screenshots from the device. The built-in quick stand works quite fine. Uh, the probes are quite standard. You have these colored rings that you put on the probes to keep track of which probes go to what input. The probe has a crocodile clip for ground connection. You can take off the outer part for probing small components. So you have a very fine pointed tip. You have a switch for selecting the attenuation one or ten times. And you can grab cables and other things to test by pulling back the probe housing at the tip. The probes feel a little cheap, but that's to be expected, as you can easily find probes that cost much more than the entire scope, and that would be just for a single probe. So I have some of these more expensive probes at work, and they're completely different level. I wouldn't trust these probes for speeds above what the oscilloscope itself can work with though, but it's, they're, they're okay. 
I borrowed a 200 megahertz Agilent scope from a friend. It's a little worn, so one of the encoders barely worked, but apart from that, it does a great job of displaying the signals. I also used a cheap waveform generator, uh, FieldTech 6600. This can certainly generate signals, but it isn't like a precision instrument, but it's good enough for this test though. My first test was probing a 16 megahertz clock of an Arduino Uno. The Agilent obviously locks onto the signal quickly and the knobs make it really easy to adjust the signal so it displays properly. Uh, with the JDS scope it takes quite a bit longer to get it right, especially if you adjust this manually. With portable tools you, you just can't add a button for every function like you have on big oscilloscopes. Every button will have to do multiple jobs, so the arrow keys will move and scale things. The right uh, part of the screen has four squares with text in them. Uh, text changes based on what of the main, which of the main buttons you press. The first of these squares hold the title of the menu and the other three tell you what the F1, F2 and F3 buttons will do at any given time. That's not very elegant, but it sure does work. Next I probed an Olimex board, a small thing that just had a LED that was uh, fading up and down. It was quite easy to find the PWM signal and have a look at it. Uh, getting it to the right values does take a lot of clicks, but it, it does work. Testing with the function generator uh, shows that it actually does live up to its spec. The triangle wave looks the same on both the Agilent and the JDS scope for all types of waveforms. On a normal scope you'll often use the knobs rather than the auto feature, but on a portable device like this you'll save a ton of time clicking if you're just using the auto feature. The auto detect feature is claimed to work from 50 Hz to 20 MHz, but that's primarily for sine wave signals. The scope will show the signals just fine, even if they are outside of that, but it can't really auto detect them. The square wave doesn't look uh, all that square since we increased the frequency, but you can see that it has the same shape on both the scope, so it does a good job. Here we're scrolling up through high frequencies from 12 MHz up to 30 MHz. This generator can only go to uh, 30 MHz, but the JDS 6052S has no problem detecting a 30 MHz sine wave also. The Agilent obviously doesn't have any problems either, given that it can go up to 200 MHz. Scrolling down through some lower frequencies, you can see that the JDS kind of depends on having a full wave uh, length visible on the display to auto detect the frequency. Uh, whereas the Agilent has no problem whatsoever, it, it just shows the right frequency all the time. One thing to note here I'm only using one channel, so I have the full 200 mega samples per second. If I was sampling two signals at this speed, I would only have 100 mega samples per channel. So that would mean that the 20 megahertz would be the maximum of what that could capture with the JDS scope. I should also mention that the 320 by 240 pixel screen has a screen capture option that is quite well hidden. You need to click the main button four times and then open the screenshot interface. It is not documented, but if you click the OK button, you will grab a screenshot. And then to get the scope to show up on your computer, you'll have to set it into U-Boot mode. This is the same mode that you use for firmware updates. And this will also make the device show up as a USB drive holding these glorious 320, 240 pixel bitmaps. It works, but it's, it's much easier to just take a picture of the screen using your mobile phone. But then again, it's, it's seldom a good feature in any oscilloscope I've tried. So it's, yeah, it's usually based on the resolution of the screen. The device has a dedicated language button that will let you toggle between English, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese and Chinese. And uh, one thing that you may have noticed is that the scope doesn't have calibration connectors like other scopes do have. Well, given that it has a built-in waveform generator, that might as well do, right? The generator can do up to 5 MHz sine waves and up to 1 MHz triangle square and sawtooth waves. The square wave can be adjusted for duty cycle if you need that, so you can make your own PWM signals at specific intervals. It will also output signals at up to 8 volts, and it can also offset the signal within those 8 volts range. So if you have a 3.3 volt signal, you can bump it up by 5 volts. 
Uh, it doesn't look like the signal drops in voltage at higher outputs either, so that's pretty good. And this is enough to be useful and it's also quite precise based on what the Agilent scope shows. So there's quite a few things to like about this. It's, it's cheap, it, it does what it says, uh, it has all the things you need. The battery life is good. Uh, I, I've been using this for four or five hours on a single charge. Uh, it actually depends on your battery. Uh, you can't really say that you have a certain uh, battery life if you don't supply battery, but hey, put in a good quality battery and you get excellent battery life. Uh, there's drawbacks as well, like it's a lot of clicking to get to anything, pretty much. It doesn't have much of a history, you can't really scroll into the signal much. The auto thing kind of works, but you might sometimes have to help it a bit. Would be nice if it came with a battery and a built-in charger, but hey, that's what it is. And when it comes to triggering, like it's, it has a trigger. <laughs> That's pretty much, you can choose if it's rising or falling. That's all you can choose, but it's not too bad. So overall, I'm, I'm quite surprised that I didn't find any severe shortcomings on the device. Uh, the measurements are of higher quality than I had expected. I can easily measure both DC and AC signals. Uh, there's obviously some shortcomings in terms of uh, looking at very low voltage signals that's still within the spec of the device, so it was expected. Compared to the Agilent, this obviously doesn't sample as often, but you only see this sampling if you go very far down in the signal range, down in the hertz, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'd like to finish off with a small disclaimer, so that while I do make a living from making hardware and software, I have limited experience with debugging analog circuits with an oscilloscope. Uh, it's part of my reason for getting one also, so I can just play around and test things easily. But, so if you're a seasoned oscilloscope user and you think I forgot to test something on this oscilloscope, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to check it out for you. Uh, hope this was useful. Bye.